And um, Arnav Kare is here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, hi Arnav. Hi Mehika. Hi. Okay. So, um, should we start? Yeah, I am. I'm just I'm sharing screen right now. Okay. One minute. Okay. We'll wait for just another minute until it becomes four or five and just then we'll start. If in case. Okay, it's okay. We'll start today's class, guys. So, of course, so far, what have we done? We've done descriptive, right? Now, in, when you're writing, there's two main things. Like, this, the writing can be divided into two main things it can either be descriptive or narrative. Of course, when you're writing any story, you have to mix both of them. You have to always be able to describe and narrate. But there's different techniques and different ways to approach when you're describing something, when you're writing a descriptive about something, and different techniques and ways to approach when you're narrating a story. So do you understand the word narrating? Like, you know, any story when you're talking to your friends, imagine like in school also, like uh, something might have happened to you and you're in a group of friends, you're talking to them and you're just telling them about the story and how happened, what happened. At that moment, you're narrating, you're telling a story. So narration is just a type of storytelling. But when you write it down, it's very hard. When you write it down for your readers, it's easy to tell your story for yourself. But when you're writing it down for your readers, you have to always make it engaging and easy to learn and easy to understand and very dramatic. Now, that's what we're going to teach. How to make your narrative as easy as possible to be able to understand. Yeah. So um, as you can remember, when we were teaching you guys about descriptive writing, we taught you how to structure your descriptive writing and um, what techniques to use. So in a very similar way, um, narrative is just another way uh, um, to write, as Pranav has said, um, and we'll tell you how to structure, um, how to plan and also some like very useful techniques. So um, let's carry forward on how to plan your narrative. So Before you start writing, anything like any kind of story you'll have to know what you're going to write in your narrative and stuff like that so um you know you have to make a plan so this is what we're going to do so every time you sit down and imagine uh, right now you want to write a story don't start writing just then you have so many ideas in your head and then once you if you just start writing your story the ideas will mix and you want to have a clear way to write and it's going to be more confusing than ever so what you have to do always is whenever you're writing a narrative, um, a narrative stuff, turn to a new page, a completely fresh page and write these eight things. Okay. And then make sure you have clear answers for each of them. Now, the first thing you have to always think about is of course, um, Arshi, plot. Yeah. So you have to think about your plot. So what exactly is the plot of a narrative or a story really? The plot of a story is where you understand um, you know, like where you are and when you are kind of thing. So you, you have to know what's happening and what situation your characters are in. So then for that, you have to understand the past of your characters. You have to understand what the present of your characters is. And since you yourself are the writer, you have to know what you're planning for these characters and you have to know their future. You have to know um, and this is all up to you, your mind, what do you choose to create, right? Um, so then you have to know what you want to put for each of your characters and what you want to hold for them in the future. So that's basically the plot. You have to understand their whole timeline. So always have a what's happened so far. So make sure in your mind, you know, like that a story doesn't just come out of nowhere, right? Somebody's joining. Okay. Um, Stories don't just come out of nowhere, right? They have to have had something to lead up to that. And you don't have to describe all of it and uh, talk about all of it, but make sure that um, each of your characters, they have some sort of past, some sort of like mystery to them that the readers don't fully understand. And then you can bring it up through the story. And of course you have the present. So the plot you have to, what main thing you have to think about is all the problems that your characters are going to face. Imagine you have four characters, make sure to know the past of each of the characters, make sure to know all the problems that they will face and make sure to know how they're going to solve each of those problems. Yeah. That's um, your and plot. So like, that's one thing, knowing the problems that each character is going to face individually. 
but just also know generally in your whole story what is your big problem going to be what is going to like you know make these characters move forward and stuff like that just understand what do you have to write a story about yeah and then after that is your character obviously this is a simple the first few things will very be given but always make sure to plan all of these things so make sure you know about every character that's going to be coming into your story but the main part is don't just randomly come up with an entire character and all the qualities that they have always so imagine i'm writing a story with five characters i would take a fresh page write all the five characters like names and under it i would write qualities and character traits for each of them so if my main of course i have a main character and if he follows the usual hero type of thing he's strong he's confident independent he's super smart super strong uh like physically strong but also make sure to give your character some flaws so make sure you know what each of your character's flaws are as well as their strengths so my character maybe he's to you know um pride he has a lot of pride and he doesn't let anyone tell him um like he doesn't listen to anyone and because he doesn't listen to anyone um somebody might have warned him of something and then he uh, that lands him in a problem so that's my character's flaw or my character might be very greedy and because of that he take he wants more and more and then eventually that leads to his destruction so always write all the qualities of their personality how they look um, always yeah make sure to know how they look also in your head like the hair color all of that and then their personality and always make sure every character has a flaw or multiple flaws even because nobody is perfect right and you can't write a character that's perfect so and it's very unrealistic to the readers so make sure to know what their flaw is and when you're writing about these characters try and bring out that flaw like um maybe if my character is very greedy um when i'm writing yeah. even if it doesn't mean much um like even a small incident like oh his eyes look like he was very jealous of that person who um you know had a lot of money or had a very expensive like clothes or whatever it might not need to add anything to the story but it adds to his personality and that's also very important so know what your character traits are and flaws and while writing try and bring out those character traits and flaws like little by little throughout the story so that's good to yeah, hear yeah so um yeah it's you can see that it's supposed to be a gradual thing um you know even if your story is pretty short your characters you can't just list out everything about them it's supposed to be more gradual but what you do while you're planning is plan everything at once like about the character and i mean you know it's not necessary that you definitely have to go by strictly what yeah. you plan but a good like you know you have a rough idea and that's perfectly fine um so then what you should always keep in mind is that even if some parts of the character aren't you know complementary to the pl uh, plot or whatever you need to make sure that the character is involved in the plot and has a reason to be involved in the plot right so then then again you know you you this is all a part of your planning you understand where your characters will be and how they're placed within your plot yeah but also make sure to know how your character will change so maybe my if my story is about how this like very weak um, very shy bo like boy eventually he faces a lot of problems and he becomes stronger and more confident in himself so of course that means his personality has changed he has different traits but uh, so make sure to know how your character will be before the story and how they will be after the story so you can lead like slowly bring that gradual because halfway through the story if you decide wait no i want him to change like like i want my character to become like this and suddenly you bring out traits in them which were never seen before like this reader when they read it they will like oh where did this come from like it should not make no it should not you should make as much sense as possible of the character to your readers yeah yeah um after that we have conflict so conflict you can you can tell that it's extremely important and while you you know decide your plot you'll eventually automatically come to the point of a conflict because if you don't decide your conflict then what's the point of having a story if you don't decide a problem or a mo something that motivates your characters to move forward or do something how will you have um you know a story at all So then, it's the why is the story what is the point of the story that's your conflict if the point of my story is um again a rags to riches type of thing where a really poor guy he becomes um like very rich then the thing that drives him is the lack of money yeah yeah so basically um conflict as said is what drives your main character 
Now, there's many kinds of conflict that can occur in so many different kinds of stories, right? So um, there's physical conflicts, like um, given in the example where um, money is the conflict and, you know, the lack of money is, you know, causing difficulties for the character. That's a physical conflict. Now, there can also be emotional conflict, um, which is like, suppose there's fear in someone's mind of doing something and that has to be overcome throughout the story. So then that's like emotional conflict. And basically this conflict has to be overcome or, you know, it has to try to, you have the character has to attempt to tackle it throughout the story. And that's what makes this whole story very interesting. So make sure you have one overall like conflict to your story. What is going to be achieved at the end of the story? That's going to be your conflict. Um, Fena, one minute. Um, Parnika, you can't see the screen. Yeah, I can't see it. Oh, okay. Um, can um, everyone else see their screen? See my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. okay. Um, Wait, I'll stop. So I don't have another device. So maybe I can see it properly. Okay, I'll just, I'll stop sharing and try again. If it doesn't work, I think um, it's, there's a problem with the device. I'll, okay. I'll just do one with my other device then. Um, yeah. Okay. How about so, now? now? Yeah, I can see it. I can, okay. I've always been able to see it. Okay. Parnika, can you see it now though? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, good. Um, where were we? So conflicts, there's two types. There's physical and emotional. Physical is when there's one thing, like a physical thing that they want. Like maybe it's a story about how a village has no water and it's about how they have to find water to make their um, people in the village survive. So the so thing that drives... Physical, um, that's a yeah. physical, um, you know... Or like a lack of food. Something. Yeah. yeah, lack of food, lack of so, water. Like something they want physical, that's a physical conflict. Otherwise, emotional will be maybe it's the it's um uh, it's in the mind of the like character right so then um you know suppose the character is afraid what does the character want to overcome the fear now you can't physically overcome a fear right it's all in your head so that's why you call it an emotional conflict yeah and of course you can have multiple of like small conflicts in your story where each character can have something they want arnav arnav you had a doubt arnav Okay, whatever. So, um, anyway, I don't, I don't remember what I was saying. Uh, go on. Um, yeah, so then um, after conflict, we have to talk about, so definitely once you've determined what conflict you want in your plot, um, you know, you have to decide so many other things of how you'll go about your entire story. How will you tell your readers what you're trying to say, right? You have to look at the different settings. Just like you're, disc you're thinking, this is often overlooked, but just like, um, you know, you have to decide what your characters are going to have and what properties are going to have such that they suit the plot or something where, you know, they're like, you know, they're brought up as unique or something like that. You have to also see the setting, the setting. How is it going to, um, you know, be significant? You can have, um, you know, for example, you can have, um, we're going to talk about Cinderella, right? So then in, in Cinderella, she lives in a house with her step family who treats her very badly. And that house, you know, it signifies how she feels trapped sometimes. So then um, it signifies how she's not free. So then, you know, that setting, the setting of the house is very significant in our story. So make sure so to know all the settings your characters will go through. And of course, you have to have a visual in your head, like maybe the setting in the beach, there's water, sand, um, there are skies, like whatever. Make sure to have a clear image of the setting so that when you're writing it, you can talk about that setting. But the most important thing is to make sure that the setting, you know how your characters will react to the setting. So if it's a very like a small like village town person who's going to a city, right? Of course, they'll have, they'll be like, whoa, what is this? Um, like if they see a palace or something and they've never seen it before, they're going to be amazed and surprised and like, um, like in awe. In awe, yeah. yeah. In awe of the palace. So that's the um, impact of the setting on your characters. So it's always good that whenever you, there is a change of setting in your story, make sure for it to have an impact on your characters and um, bring it out when you're writing. Because that always, it makes it more realistic in your, when your character, whenever a reader is reading your story, it makes them very realistic whenever your character like has a reaction to the setting that, that's around them. 
Yeah. So um, obviously, if you know you want to be a writer that actually appeals to what your audience uh, appeals to your audience, you have to maintain some kind of um, a realistic view. So, and another way, like which is the next point, another way in which you can keep engaging your audience throughout your story is hurdles. It's one of the most important parts of your story. Yeah. Yeah. So hurdles is like trials and tests for the, um, you know, main characters. So basically what's going to happen is the uh, main character will observe the conflict that you have decided and they'll try to overcome it. Now in in the process of overcoming, they'll face many small problems. Right. So then that is what's going to be called hurdles. And one very popular thing that writers do is you have your main character. They take away everything they love. They break down your character. They make them face like the strongest of problems and like um, such that they can't like that's the whole point. Make sure for your readers feel for your characters. And the only way I truly feel for this fictional person that you've written is if you like absolutely try and um, make the story so like trialing and like uh, hard for the characters to go. So whenever you're th- thinking of thinking of the different problems that your character has to face, try and be as brutal as possible to your um, characters, of course. Of course, if it's a real life story that you're, uh, right, you're talking about, it doesn't have to be like this. But in the terms of something fictional that you're writing and you want it to be um, very like have a huge impact on your readers, try and make the problems as um, sad or like, not, not sad instead, but drawing ma- the readers Intense sympathy. and like Intense. difficult. Really, difficult. all you have to do is build up tension. What hurdles are going to do in your story is build up tension. And that's basically it. Yeah. And yeah. So always make sure to know, uh, like note down each incident that your characters will be going through. If you're writing a smaller story, of course, you don't have to write so much. Your plot can just be two lines. You can have characters, just one or two characters and few um, ca- uh traits yeah You're, and um, you can just have one conflict that's driving it you know, there don't there have to be multiple problems you not know, just throughout one setting or just one or two small problems that the character has to overcome yeah so, and since like um all of us right now you're learning how to um you know write it's not expected that you're going to write like a book like harry potter or percy jackson you're not going to write a full book but what you can do is start thinking of plots, start thinking of small things and write a small scale story, which will help you exercise your writing. Yeah, just, you know, these are, these are to help you under, like, understand how a narrative, like the important parts of a narrative. Now, again, the thing that makes every story, it's the climax. It's the hows, if you will. How does the main problem, the conflict get solved? The climax is not... A, a thing but rather a, a event in your um, story where it completely turns around the story it's like so you've been building up tension obviously you've, there's so many problems that the um, your character has overcome the climax is at the point where eventually so in the terms of money if i'm doing a racks to riches story it's the point in the story where um the reader um can you hear me yeah it's the point in the story where um the character is in the reach of money. He's in the like tip of success and he can get everything he's wanted and he hasn't gotten it yet. So it's the point where we don't know whether he gets what he wants or, or whether he doesn't get what he wants. It's that point where it's usually one decision um, and that decision can either make or break your character. Um, yeah. it's, it's so they can either get what they want or in like a flip, like a second, they can lose everything. So that's your yeah, climax. So, um... Definitely, as you can think about it, a climax is supposed to be very, very tense, right? It's supposed to, you know, possibly keep your readers or audience at the tip of their seats. And that's what is going to like, you know, anticipate and grip your readers. So then that's a very important If you've seen part. certain movies, um, you'll see there'll be many problems and not all of them will have solutions. And then uh, there'll be problems of problems and it's towards the end of the movie, right? And there's like 10 more minutes and you're thinking, wait, how are they going to solve so many problems in like 10 minutes? And then at one point, they come up with one solution that solves everything. That's very common. It's like, they, it's an idea that they get. Now this point where they get an idea, that uh, transition is the climax. It's If they hadn't gotten that idea, they're obviously broken. You break the character because so many problems, they don't have a solution. But they did get the idea. So your character has been made. And the climax yeah. is that point where 
they able to solve the main problem so what you have to understand is based on how you write your climax and based on what content you put in your climax that is how your story is going to end it's going to be happy or sad based on what happens in the climax so in case your climax for example breaks your character right it leads it leaves the character in um you know a terrible state it doesn't mean that it's not a climax the climax is still there it was still a very very tense point but it broke the character so then it leaves um leaves us in a sad point so then that's how the story goes down um and you know if you if it made the character then maybe it's a happy ending so then that's um that'll be seen at the end and so, then after yeah. the climax is the point of the solutions where of course now they've gotten an idea now all they have to do is use that to solve all of the problems and at this point like we know if, like if it's a good climax like it's made the character we know that the character is going to be fine and now all they have to do is use that solution in the best way possible and it's like the tension is lowering because each problem gets solved one by one if there's multiple problems or it's the process of solving the main conflict like that's the problem so it's just it's usually mellowed down it's not as tense it's uh, it's usually sometimes if if it's a solution to a problem it's usually happy because you're like whoa my character's made it like if you get attached to your character so your solution is the uh, point after the climax leading towards the end and then of course you have your ending which is the last few pages of your story where it can be positive it can be negative if it's of course if your climax has broken the character then it's going to lead to a sad ending but again if your climax has made the character is going to be happy so you can obviously end it on a positive or happy note this is ending is just the ending of your story which is how you want it to end yeah um i have a doubt yeah, yeah. if your climax breaks your character do you need solutions or you can just jump to the ending no but if your climax has broken your uh, character then in your solution instead of solutions it would be talking about the um, how your character is after that like he's broken like, right and so yeah. what he's feeling what all of the other characters are feeling because of course they're super sad and it might not be the ending of the story but again it's the lowering of tension there's so much tension and don't stop your story right after like the climax after your character has been broken always write a little bit more so that the readers get to know like how your characters are after that very like important moment where your character so um let me give you an example of a climax that breaks the character suppose um you know there's a main character he's fighting a villain and then um you know the villain like you know is he's very powerful he is beating all um, all of like the good people the like the good side or something like that okay and it gets so difficult that the only option that um the good people have is to run away now do you think that's um overcoming the conflict no so therefore it's breaking the character they are not solving the conflict they're not defeating a bad guy they're just running away and that is breaking the character and then you can you know you can talk about and that leads to a sad ending where or how they you can talk they about one maybe they um like running away to a particular place to tell people um that they lost the battle So now that's your lowering of your story um where they're all guilty they feel really bad um and then everyone else and then the effects of that on your story so now maybe this evil villain has taken over the entire like a like a country or a village or whatever and now he is reigning so always try and extend your story a little bit after the climax even if it's sad to talk about the effects it has on the story and then yeah. in the end you can end it. but one thing you should keep in mind is the climax is often at the end so don't try to extend it so much that you know you have to go on and on and on just something give them an idea of the impact the climax has that's all but even in this that, that case you can still have a, a happy ending if your climax has broken the character like imagine the same context the villain has of course beaten the characters and he's taken over this country but towards the end you, you maybe you can have an ending where the your main character has found love like he'd be like oh i lost this but at least i have you or like that and that is a ha- happy ending but it's the climax could have been sad so they lost something but also gained um so it doesn't have to be like completely sad you can mix your emotions here and there there's lots you can do in writing yeah, and so bring. i mean that's that's basically like for a full story right but um you guys don't worry about it as of now because um you know that's a lot of things like you know there's so many different stories if you have to have many emotions right so if we're talking about just one story there it's going to end in one emotion right yeah. 
and here is the structure of your story i don't know if you many have you seen this um pyramid ever like in school or somewhere around it's very no. famous okay no it's yeah, we learned about in like fifth grade oh okay then then i think this will be easier for you but um after this we'll apply it to cinderella and other movies and i think that part will be more fun but just bear with me for now um yeah. so every time whenever you start writing your story you should always at the start of your story like which is of course you have an introduction a body and a conclusion like it's just like a descriptive but different things go in the introduction body and conclusion so when you're writing a narrative your introduction or in the st- in the narrative sense it's called an exposition you don't have to know the words and all i'm just saying um in your introduction you would always introduce your setting um like the place your characters are in where they are like what time period they're in your characters have a small small description of your characters how they look maybe um like um their relationships with each other like brother or sister parents whatever and just tell a little bit about each of your characters to um the readers and of course always try and introduce the conflict so at the start of the story introduce like what the main problem is if it's money like you can try and talk about how poor they are um they don't have any um, like any facilities any resources that yeah. would be your conflict um so then there is character setting and conflict and then after that you have to move on to a rising action so obviously when you start your rising action this is where your story sets foot okay so then basically once you start um you know the the character knows what the conflict is which is shown in the exposition um now they'll try to keep fighting it they'll try to overcome it they'll try to do something to go against it so the But, hurdles the hurdles yeah. we talked about the problems that they're going to face you know try and take everything away from your character and help them overcome it that's what you'll put here so each problem will increase the tension now of course you don't have to give the solution right away so or maybe this poor family they lose somebody like even though they are poor and you already introduced that maybe they lose somebody in their family that's one problem and then maybe um their parents lose their job so now they're going to be even more poor that's another problem and each problem stacked on uh, on each other will keep again raising the tension and you when you're reading so, you'll be like whoa they lost somebody now they've lost their um, like jobs also how will they survive they already have no money and when you get worried when the readers get worried that's raising the tension and yeah, so what so, you want to do oh yeah continue um what you can do is imagine what this whole graph as like you know a mark of the tension so then you know like you know um as the rising action starts the tension starts to grow So um if you read it over there it says the characters attempt to solve the problem but fails. So what is really important when you write about hurdles in your rising action is that you are not supposed to let the character solve the problem ma- immediately. Mm-hmm. There's still the main conflict is still supposed to be there. And you know the characters are supposed to get more frustrated and panicked and you know scared and so are you. So are the audience uh, or the, the, um, the audience of the readers. Um, and Yeah. I have a doubt. Yeah. Do we do we need more do we need like does every story need hurdles or can we skip hurdles and move on to something else? Like if can we just don't okay. not use hurdles? No, but so, um, um how would you then of course you can what so you'd start you introduce your characters your conflict and your setting and then what will you do? Like where will you go from there? So will we just they do the rise of the... action, and then they just reach the climax, and then they do the falling action, and then the result. Yeah, the but ending. so if um, you have, how will you create a rising action if you don't have hurdles, right? Okay, like, like hurdles. So, yeah, when we say hurdles, how it... many hurdles do we need? Like how many hurdles? What? One. How many ever? One I is mean, also like, enough. It depends, it depends on, on how, long. how long your story is. Yeah, it depends right? on how long your story um, is. Um so then if you want to have like a long story like you know if you might have read Percy Jackson or Harry Potter there's so many hurdles like little little things that you know yeah. make him less confident and you know disrupt them or something like that. So there's so many hurdles yeah. because that's a very big story and yeah. it has like it's over a scope of like a year. If you read sh- like short stories like that happen over a night like there's only like one problem like of course the, there's the main problem like if it's a story of me catching like a bad guy i'm a detective or something the main conflict is me i have to find this guy but i could solve one hurdle where um i'm like you know it, it's just i'm looking for him 
So as I'm looking for him, I don't find him here. I don't find him here. I don't find him here. They're not hurdles like it, like it is in your head. Like they're not specified problems. But even just the fact that he doesn't find him in one place, that again raises the tension. So it could be a hurdle. So, so basically, any, yeah, anything um, that builds up tension is technically a hurdle. Yeah. So all we're doing... writing, if we're writing homework on this, are uh, one or two hurdles enough? Yeah. 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 So don't worry. So we'll specify fine. that for you. Um, okay, so then basically, all you have to do to create a hurdle is make the character try to overcome the conflict, but fail. And that can be done in so many ways. So that's your own like choice. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, we reach the climax, which is the turning point, the point, greater suspense. You're like, wait, will he, will he, like, again, detective, will the detective find the criminal or not? And then eventually, he maybe finds a clue that no, everyone else missed. And then with that clue, he that would be a climax, right? He finds that he sees the clue and then everything clicks in his head. He's like, wait, obviously that means um, the uh, um, criminal is here. So the climax has made the detective. And then the falling action would be um, the detective, of course, uses that clue to go and eventually find. So that's where the solutions come in. And eventually, re- uh, so like solutions is when you use what, again, you find what um, you have and then you, know, you use it to solve the problem. And then um, you come to your res- resolution. Resolution, as we said, in your, um, based off your planning, it's the ending, right? You see, um, based on off the com- uh, climax, is it happy or is it sad? So then that's your resolution. Yeah. So eventually, the resolution would be the end of the story where like, they um, chain the, they handcuff the criminal. And maybe your detective says something really smart or something funny or just something to like, end the story. He was like, and like, catch you next time or something, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, so then that's, that's the main idea for the whole graph thing. Here we have, a we have a small example. example. We have a very small example and this will make you understand how to do it. So this story, it's called the frog. Um, it's a story about how this little girl, her parents leave her because they have to go somewhere and her babysitter cancels. So she's alone in her house. Okay. She's like 10. Um, she's, yeah. Imagine she's 10 and she's imagining, Oh, I'll just sit at home all day and then I'll have fun and, um, just wait for my parents and she has a whole plan. But then a frog, a huge frog comes inside her house and she's so terrified because she's never like dealt with this. She doesn't know what to do. So that would be, that's the story. It's very simple. It's very plain, but it'll, it's, it'll help you understand all of this problem. So your exposition would be, again, which is just setting and stuff. Um, parents uh, never let her stay alone. But one night the babysitter cancels and they have to, they have to leave her alone. Everything starts off fine. I'm having a great time. So here, your setting would be, it's one setting. It's the house. And the effect of this setting on your readers would be, she's very comfortable. She knows her house very well. She's lived there for a long time. She, like, she's happy inside her house. And then your character would be, of course, this girl. It's one character. Um, and the conflict is, uh, eventually, the conflict you see. I see a frog in the hall. I am totally afraid of frogs, so I freak out. So you introduce a conflict where a huge, a huge frog comes inside. And now you keep building tension from here. She eventually, she like, she goes and hides from it. And that again, brings up such suspense. She's like, is she going to hide the entire day from the frog? Like that's, you know, it makes many questions in the reader's head. And then she says, I try and fail to, I try and trap it, but fail. Like she tries to use a trash. um, Again, a hurdle where you try to overcome the conflict, but it doesn't. Yeah. And I try and fail to get into a bag. She maybe, she tries something else again, fails. And then the climax would be this girl has a tennis racket and she's running after the frog and the frog is almost coming out of the house. And that point would be a climax. It'd be like, does the frog go outside or not? And of course, using the tennis racket, it goes. So of course, the character has been made and the frog is gone. Now your falling action would be, I spend the rest of the night cleaning up my mess. I get into pajamas, watch a TV. My parents come home. Everything is happy. Things seem okay. My parents, parents, something. And then your resolution would be, I consider asking to not be left alone. Um, then realize that the frog incident showed me that I'm stronger than I thought. So of course, this has brought a change in your characters, which is, not, you don't have to always do that, but at the, here in this, it's done. At the start, she was scared of frogs. Now she's strong. So, so um, you can see how the ending is impacted from the climax. The climax is where she overcame her conflict and she was made. So then, you know, when she was made, she gained... I mean, a sense of confidence and stuff like that. She was, at first she was afraid and now she's not. So then that's again, again, and you know, a maid, uh, the character is made. 
Okay, so following this type of uh, um, tension in your story is always very dramatic, very memorable for the readers. They always understand this and it's the best way. It's not the best way. You can obviously play around with it. Not every story follows this exact same thing. Um, but it's a very, having to start off like this, it's a very good way to start writing a narrative and, you know, make sure it has a good impact at the end of it on the readers in the sense of like um, the ending to your story. Right. Um, let's move on to some examples. Hopefully, um, you know, we can get some interaction done with you guys over this. Um, so Cinderella, does everyone over here know like the brief story of Cinderella? Yeah. Anyone who doesn't? You don't um, need to know the specifics, but as long as you know the main like, you know, idea. Yeah. So then um, we chose Cinderella because it's a very visible, um, you know, the way that it's planned, the way that it's, um, you know, story goes, it's very visible and it's very easy for us. It's a very easy example for us to explain to you guys, right? Um, so let's talk about the start, the exposition of Cinderella, right? Um, so then in the exposition, we get to know that what kind of a character Cinderella is. She, um, she, like her parents had died. She's living with her step family and it's, it's pretty difficult for her. She's hardworking. And, you know, even though she's always put under so much pressure and she's constantly criticized, she dreams of living a better life. And she dreams of, you know, um, you know, one day going to the castle, one day going outside of the house. Right. So then um, that, that is there. And then, you know, you get oh, to see. So you can identify all of these things um, in the story. So your plot is, of course, the past where her parents have died. That's her past. Like she, her parents have died and she's living with her aunts. So, of course, your main character has a past. Her present is that her whole step family hates her and they just use her as their personal maid. And um, that's your present. And in the future, you know that she's going to work towards going outside and exploring that's what she wants to do. That's going to be your future of your the plot. So if you were writing the plot of Cinderella, this is how you would plan it. Yeah. And then, um, so basically, since you know the plot now, um, it's really easy to go about this whole thing, right? Um, so then you also notice, like, the setting of this whole thing. Um, let me please go back to the graph so it's easier yeah, yeah, for yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Going, I'm going. yeah, yeah. So then, um, so then basically now you understand the setting you understand that in this house all she does is clean all she does is you know she's constantly discouraged and stuff like that she's treated very badly in this house and yeah. then um you know it's a movie right so then you can see her looking outside the window you can see her looking at the castle and it's something she dreams of right so then that's that's a setting you so you know that. the impact of the setting on cinderella so the impact of the setting of her house is that you know she gets pushed around very easily by her step family but when she goes and sees the palace she'd be in awe surprise you know at how wonderful and beautiful it was yeah. and you have to make sure to like develop that in your when you're so writing. um basically the setting the, the house where she lives it's basically um it makes her feel trapped but then the castle makes her or the sight of anywhere outdoors makes her feel free hmm. so that's a very important contrast and then you also understand the conflict which is very evident by how much i've said till now the conflict and the problem is that she's constantly treated very badly by her step family. So then that's the conflict. So is this an emotional conflict or a physical conflict? Like she wants to go outside, like her family's treating her bad. Is that uh, physical or emotional? Emotional. Emotion, it's, but can it also be physical? Yeah, yeah, it can. It can, right? Emotional, she obviously, it's sort of emotional because she, it's like she wants to do something outside. But the main uh, like point is her family, that's what that's restricting her from going outside. It's not like she has any fears about herself or she's not dealing with any emotional problems. She's, she herself is not hesitant to go outside. Yeah. The only problem, the only thing that's blocking her from doing what she wants and following her dreams is her family. So that's a so, physical entity. That's something that's stopping her, right? So in this case, it would be a physical um, conflict. Yeah. Um, so then basically there's a rising action where, um, you know, eventually the plot comes into place where, um, you know, there's a letter from the palace which says that the prince is having a dance and he will choose his, um, you know, potential maiden at Wife. that dance. Yeah. 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 
so then uh, so then uh, you know his potential wife at that dance and you know all um, eligible people can go so then um you know that includes cinderella but then her pair um you know her family discourages her from going so then um you know you can see that there's an opportunity for cinderella to go outside the house and stop being trapped and actually be free but the hurdle is that her um step family discourages her um and you know there's many many hurdles throughout like they lock her in a room once and she, and then that's a hurdle and then she overcomes that by using the animals to like help her go outside yeah. so, so that would be a um, solution to that problem so then you know like there's there's many things like when um Cinderella actually wants to go to the ball she uh, once everyone's left she tries to get ready and then um you know her sisters see it and they get really mad and then they you know ruin her dress and everything and you can see that that's a terrible low point for her she was trying to overcome her conflict she was trying to be free but then her um you know the hurdle wasn't let, like the main conflict wasn't letting her so like that so there's then, many problems and it like yeah. it raises the action and yeah. then So can anyone tell me what the climax of it is? If you know the story, what where does it change for Cinderella? Where does it make or break? So if you may not remember, she goes to the ball. She um, leaves a slipper over there. The prince falls in love with her, love with her, and you know he wants to search the kingdom in order to find the girl who he fell in love with by fitting the shoe. Um. So then, and right before that, like you know, right when, um, right before the prince is. i don't know what he is but like the prince comes to the um to their her house to fit the shoe on um you know she's locked into her room and everything so can someone tell me what is the climax what is the most tense point and what is so the point that makes they find the shoe Cinderella? and they're coming inside the inter inside her house and they're trying it on for everyone but then her family locks her in a room to make sure that she doesn't um see it so what is the climax like where would you find out whether she's made or like broken Oh, uh, when she tries to come out of the room. Yeah. Um, so at that point, to... that's the climax. You're like, can she come out or not? Right. That would, if she can, if she's made. She gets to live freely because she'll be able to marry the prince. But if she cannot, then she has. She's broken because then she never has another chance to ever go out of her house, and she'll be like her step step family will like be like rude to her for the entirety of her life. And yeah. that would be the climax. Yeah. So you can see that this climax eventually made her. the slipper fit and you know it was like possibly like a magical situation where she finally found the prince finally found her she fell like you know the prince knows who he loves and stuff like that and eventually it resides down into a solution where they leave the house and you know she's overcome the um you know the rude step family and then she lives happily and freely with the prince they get married and then they get married so, so that would be a resolution that's how it ends Yeah. Okay. So just like that. Just like that, we have the next another story. We'll do this very quickly because I it's again very repetitive. It's going to be almost very similar. But this um, one has this story will have something which is slightly different from the previous one. That's why we chose it. Of course, they're both like princess, like Disney princesses. But we'll tell you why we chose these two stories. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wait one minute. So most of you um know the plot, right? Of Do you know the plot of Frozen? Um. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. Even yeah, but I'll be I'll describe it a little bit. It, you don't have to um know it by like very detailed. But of course, it starts off where um um Elsa uh she has these powers. She's had them since she was a child. Then when um the then you introduce to the characters at that point where Elsa and Anna they're sisters they're very close they play a lot and of course the parents very protective they also love their children that would be your characters and then by accident Elsa like uh like uh does some strikes, ice uh, yeah, strikes, strikes um Anna on the head yeah and then like because of that Anna almost dies and then they of course bring her back and then they lock Elsa in her room to try and isolate her from her sisters so that she doesn't harm any more people and of course because- Anna, they are uh, because they are afraid of the power that she has yeah so now this is all the past the pa- this is a small it's a small description of the past of the plot it's like a small flashback of all of this and um like her, then eventually her parents die um bo- like elsa and anna's parents die and then this um plot starts from your movie that's the past of your plot and then the present of the plot is um she's the queen she um she gets crowned the queen because her parents have died obviously so now she has to control um no uh, the entire arendelle the kingdom yeah. 
And then in the future, of course, is going to be, you're going to make sure, of course, there's a lot of problems she faces, but the future of the plot is going to be, she's going to come and be comfortable with herself and be able to rule Arendelle properly. So, yeah. But the reason this doesn't happen is because of the conflict. The conflict is what? Um, she has, she's very scared of herself. She doesn't believe in herself. She's very scared of her powers. She's scared that it'll hurt people. And she feels like she's not good enough to be the um, prince or queen of Arendelle. That would be the conflict. Now here, is the conflict physical or emotional? Um, emotional. It's, it's emotional. Yeah. Emotional. It's something in her head. There's nothing that's, there's no person. or Of course, there's like small problems here and there, but there's no proper person that's stopping her, right? It's her own self that's stopping herself from being as powerful or as strong as she can and independent. It's all in her head. Okay. So that's the conflict. So your future, you know that she overcomes this conflict and she stops being scared of herself. That's going to be the future of your plot. Yeah. Um, Prana, can you scroll back up to the graph so then we can discuss accordingly, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then um, basically now you see like a rising action. Um, Elsa finds out that, you know, like more people know about her power. You know, you, um, there, she the, runs away a lot from of small, Yeah, there's a lot of small problems. And then one is where um, Anna falls in love with... Um, the prince, Prince Hans, and then they tell um, Elsa and then she gets mad. And then when she gets mad, then she like, um, because of how she can't control her emotions, she like freezes the entire, some, she like does a blast of like ice and everyone gets scared of her. And that's the first problem. And when everyone gets scared of her, she runs away. That's the, and as she runs away, then Anna has to go and find her. So this is how the tension is uh, like raised. As Anna tries, looks everywhere, she can't find her. And then she goes through a lot of, she has to like climb that snowy mountain and stuff. And we don't know if Anna will be able to make it. And that small problem, but a problem, it raises the attention. So um, what you can notice over here is that um, Anna is like by, uh, you know, and by the middle of the movie, Anna becomes like a very important character and we recognize her efforts, right? And she herself is trying to fight the conflict, even if she doesn't know fully what the conflict is. She doesn't know how scared Elsa is. And that's, um, you know, that conflict is in Elsa's mind, but she's trying to get Elsa back. She's trying to make Elsa like overcome her fears. So then, um, you know, you can see Anna who faces her own hurdles and stuff like that. So um, that's basically a character going against the conflict. And that is a rising action. Mm. And then throughout all of this, then Elsa, when they're grown up, Elsa strikes Anna again. And as Anna, like heart is frozen and in like a few hours or something, like her entire like body will be frozen. And then when Elsa finds this out, she comes running. Again, this again all raises tension. And eventually it leads to the climax point where Elsa is running and she sees, and she's too late. She sees that um, Anna completely freezes over. Where's that picture? Yeah. Right. She sees that uh, Anna's completely frozen over. Right. Now this is the climax point. But here you think the climax is like, wait, uh, Anna's completely frozen. Is she lost forever? That would be like, it maybe if she is lost forever, it will break Elsa. But if she can bring Anna back, it will again make Elsa. So your climax is at this point. And then um, Elsa realizes that only an act of true love can bring someone back once they're frozen. But she thinks she's too late. So she just goes and hugs Anna, right? And then when she hugs uh, and like starts crying, because she loves Anna so much, that's an act of like true love. And then Anna, um, uh, like completely, she comes back to normal. Now that's the climax the point. The climax point is when she freezes over, you'll be like, wait, is Anna gone forever or is she not? Can Elsa bring her back? So you'll be like, if Elsa can't bring her back, again, Anna, uh, um, Elsa is going to be broken. If Elsa can bring her back, she's going to be a maid and she can help the whole city. And when she goes and hugs her, um, because of how much she loves Anna, she's able to overcome the conflict yeah. and bring so, Anna back. Um, at this climax okay so then since the conflict was an emotional one right what we what Elsa realizes is it's not just about you know Anna coming back it's just it's about how Elsa realizes that love can thaw it's about how Elsa realizes that her powers are containable and that it her powers are, aren't um, it's by yeah. love she, if she like she uses love to control her powers, right? And if she loves not only Anna, but if she starts loving herself and starts like stop being scared of herself, she realizes that love can overcome anything. And because of that, yeah. she realizes how powerful she is. And then she like, uh, there's that evil Hans or something who's trying to like become king. She fights him and then she stops the entire um, city from like freezing over. 
and she uses her powers for good. And then all the citizens see her and then they're all happy. So, yeah, so at then that this is point, the solution. Yeah, at that po- that's the solution. But at that point where she realizes the power of her love and how she can use it to control her powers, um, she's overcome the conflict. And then the solution part is after that, that there's a whole like part of the story where she uses her powers to stop everything. And yeah. the resolution part is when uh is at the end when she comes and sits on the like place in her inside her palace she accepts being queen and that's accepts what. being the yeah. queen so um, that's okay so then guys that's the end of the discussion of plots i know it may have been a little bit boring for all of you because you know all we did was talk now um so here's the thing um do we have any time left no we don't have much time left okay so just like how descriptive had a bunch of techniques Remember, we talked about a lot of techniques that you can use while writing. Just like that, um, uh, narrative has like a lots of techniques that you can use. Um, so this part is boring, of course, when we talk to you about narrative and how to write it, but it's important for you to understand. So even when you're analyzing, uh, analyzing other stories, you can use this same um, a graph to be able to like understand which part of the story and the point of that. Like every action now, because you know what, what's supposed to have its effect on you. So when you're analyzing these movies and stories, you can easily understand the point of everything. But so, and this is important for you to start writing. When you're writing narratives, you need to know all of this. You might not need to have follow it, but you have to be able to know this and know um, why each of these is important to a narrative. Yeah, so based off that, you can obviously, this is just, we're trying to give you a base. And um, at the point where you're trying to gain a base, it's kind of important to just, you know, listen for a little while. And we hope you're okay with that. We'll have activities in the next few classes. Next class, so please, next class is only yeah. techniques that you can use while writing, uh, writing um, narratives. So it's going to be way more interactive. We'll ask for you. We'll do examples and stuff. But yeah. yeah. So um, hopefully you guys learned something from this discussion. And here we have an activity which you might find fun on your own. So, you don't um, have to. You don't have to send anything to us this time, because it's just a lot of information. As long as you're able to like understand that, but yeah. here. So just do it on your own. See if you can do it. Um, it'll be like good for you and better for you when you have to build your base for a narrative. At next class, when we teach you some of the techniques, then we'll give you a writing assignment where you can use those techniques into your writing and send us something. But yeah, the so main then point, basically, yeah. um, you have to look at a story or a movie that you know, or, you know, is very famous or something like that. And you have to, um, you know, all of the bullet points that we discussed that you have to plan, you have to look at the movie that you like. And, you know, you have to, um, you know, you have to see that wh- where did this go in and where did um, each like point, you have to point? understand. Yeah. Yeah, so you when you have, you have each of the, the characters, so try and understand what the writer would have thought. So when he's writing this particular character, what qualities did he give him? What was the flaw of this person? Uh, like even Cinderella, like she probably has many qualities that the writer would like. She's innocent, but she's hardworking, right? She like never like she's hardworking, but she's not strong. She can't stand up for herself. That's her flaw. She's not strong and cannot stand up for herself. Just like that, Elsa has so much self doubt and fear. That's her flaw. So each, yeah. so try and identify what they're good at, like what their characteristics are, but also the flaw of the character. And so yeah, in a way that, um, in a way, when you're doing this, like, you know, you can think of a story, like a book even. So when you're doing this, um, you know, you're basically analyzing and breaking down what the um, whole plot was. So then, you know, it's, it's a good exercise. And this is a very, if you want to like start analyzing um, any stories, movies and poems and stuff, usually this is a very good way to break it down and uh, like take each part of a story, look at it because it's very hard to look at a whole story and be like, what does it mean? So this is made easier for you to take one part, look at it and then um, understand it, take another part. It's much easier like that. So just, of course, you have your plot. So what's the past, present and future, your characters. It might not be clear cut. It's not something you can like write down, but as long as you understand the difference of each of these, um, the characters and their qualities, the conflict, like whether it's physical or emotional, the different settings yeah. and the impact of the settings, yeah. the problems. So, um, yeah, so these are all points that we had discussed. And, um, you know, just try to like see if you can do it. Um, that's it, like, I think. Um, like, I didn't understand the homework exactly. Do we need to like 
take a story and movie and like identify all these points or um just say what's like the um plot the character and then the rising emotion the hurdles then like the yeah. con and then the no, you, yeah yeah just take each of these um eight points and like what does it mean in, in like for that story so, like yes. like in the is it the rising emotion or the this thing or yeah yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. um basically look at look at um you know a movie you already know um pretty well and then you have to you know identify its plot you have to identify the past present and future how did the um you know uh, creator do that and stuff like that um so then you have to identify each of the points do you get it yeah yeah okay okay um guys there's also something yes, we're almost do. done just one more thing uh, we're done with the class for today that's your narrative class but before that wait i'll just pull up the site just explain to them arshi while i do that yeah so basically um quarantine learning has um put up a new update on the website which um you know it'll be better if you guys can use it it'll be much more convenient for you guys um so we have this option called all of the students we'll show you how to use it right now you just have to um go to that and then you can um you know on you, there's like a track record of all the classes you have and there's like a timetable and all the homework you have so it'll be much easier for you guys so um we'll just show you how to access it can you share your screen yeah so this is our website obviously welcome to quarantine learning and you go down you're a all of you are registered students so just click on student info which is here and Wait. Um, so now all of your names are here every single all 90 students who are registered with us 90 students all of your classes are here so wait let's look for somebody Parnika where are you Parnika P it's all it's by um your alphabetical order so there's Nishka right here under Nishka there's Parnika Mihika will be you can um oh wait you can search it up there's a search bar at the top um you can search it oh up. yeah Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a search bar. Okay. Um, let's not waste any more time on that. But you can just search up your name. Even Arnav, I, your your name will be in the summer in the start. Like, right. Anyway. Um, so yeah, basically you can just um search up your name and there'll be like a, a full timetable. So just and, click on uh, view class. Just click on the view class and it'll take you to just you don't have to keep checking your WhatsApp and then the um mails. You just know every time you know that four o'clock your class is going to be at four, right? Um, so around three fifty-five, go do this, and then the Zoom link, the ID, and the password will be here. Uh, yeah. And all of your classes for the week will be here. So if this is, um, all the classes that you take and all the homework that you need to do, if in case you have to do anything, will be here, and. All the classes that you have today will be here. So Nishka, you have poetry right now, and after this, you're doing quilling, right? Yeah. Exactly. So this is your timetable. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. Okay. Um. So thank you for coming, guys. I'm sorry if this class was a little boring. You really do, but like it's really important to build your yeah. plot base. So um, Mihika, Arna, Parnika, Nishka, like, are you guys? Were you okay with this class? I actually found it really yeah. interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I like it. It was pretty fun. Okay. Okay. But next class will be better because you learn like new stuff that like you can use like practically. So yeah. 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 And can you okay. just like send the document that? Like, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. We will. We will. Can you share? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So then I can like, reference back to it and write sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, guys, the activity that we've given to you guys, you don't have to send us anything because, um, you know, it's not really relevant because all of you will have different, different plots, um, that you, sorry, stories that you'll be looking at. So just do it on your own, see if you want to do it. Um, and you know, like, you know, try it out. That's all. Yeah.